Hey everyone, this is Lawrence Watkins, founder and CEO of Great Black Speakers, back with you once again for a Great Black Speakers tip of the week. Uh, this week we have Angelina Darasaw, and uh, she is the founder of C-Suite Coach. And today we're going to be talking for those mid-level professionals out there who want to um, make it to the next level. Um, so of course, you know, the ultimate goal is to make it to uh, the C-suite, but there are steps between mid-level manager and C-suite that people need to, uh, I guess, take on the roles that they need to take on to to make that happen. Um, so, Angelina, it's great to see you. So, what what are some of the things that people need to do uh, to move from, I guess, straight up mid-level management that they might have been stuck in for the last five or six years, um, and to get to that next level for you know more money and more opportunities? Okay. Hi, Lawrence. Glad to be here. So one of the first things that stands out to me when I think about this topic is, are you asking for it? So frequently, there are employees that say, I want to get to the next level. I deserve a promotion. And they're waiting for this meritocracy to happen where promotions are just magically handed out. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, through informational interviews with over 100 people that I have stacked up who have gotten promotions, I found that what happens typically when getting a promotion is that that person has asked for it. I've heard that over and over again repeatedly as I've talked to folks in different, different industries, uh, as well as clients that I've coached. The big change maker is have I let my manager know that this is something that I want for my career, that I'm interested in growth. Frequently, they just may not know that that's something that's on your radar. So if you're putting it out there that this is what you want to be as your next step, your manager then starts to pay attention in your performance plan for how they can get you to that next step. And are you doing the right things that are showcasing that you're ready for management? So the first thing I think that's really important and critical is making the ask of your management that shows I am ready to step up, I'm willing and I'm capable to step up. So a question is why do you think so many people don't even ask uh, for that, that promotion? There are so many different reasons for this. So one of the reasons is that expectation of I'm doing hard work, my hard work will be noticed and recognized, and that's all I have to do to get to the next level. Definitely, you need to do the work to get to the next level. There's not a question about that. But sometimes for various reasons, depending on what are the motivations of your manager, the hard work is not going to be enough. They might be thinking, okay, wow, you're going above and beyond in your role. Maybe this is just what makes you happy. Maybe people feel more satisfied and engaged when you're doing extra, not realizing that this is part of a, a goal for you or part of your strategy for getting to the next level. Also, maybe they have budget restrictions and they're like, great, she's performing more or he's performing more and I don't have to pay them more to do that. <laughs> Why am I going to raise a stink about it? So they, they can be looking to you. And the other thing that I've heard over and over again from folks in different industries is that person, you know, there's another person on my team who's gotten a promotion and they weren't as talented as me or they didn't deserve it as much as I did. Well, what was the difference between you and that person? That person asked. That put person sometimes even demanded and put it out to management. If I don't get this next role, then I'm going to have to move on. So it is a huge difference uh, that happens when you go ahead and put that ask out there. Yeah. And, you know, being a business owner myself, great talent is hard to find. So those who, uh, uh, what, what is the, 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 the saying? So if you don't ask, you don't get, I, I think that's the old ask, country saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and that yeah. really is the case in business in all different industries. Right, right. So what would you say is the uh, next tip that you have? So I would say after you've made the ask, listen to what is the response from who, whoever is the a decision maker. If it's your direct manager, if it's a VP on your team, listen to what they're saying. So they may say, oh, wow, I didn't even know you were thinking about that. Go right ahead. You got the next promotion, next open spot, headcount is yours. But they may also say, no, I don't really see you being ready for this. Now's not a good time. You need to develop more. Well, when they say that they need you to develop more, as, as a person that's seeking a promotion, you have to be very diligent in asking questions and asking for measurable uh, metrics for success. How do, how do we measure my progress? How do we measure my development and readiness for this? So you can have accountability. So when you come back to the conversation six months from now, a year from now, you have 
you have points, you have uh, ways you can say, well, I've exceeded this goal that we laid out six months ago. And you said that if I exceeded this goal, this goal, and this goal, I'm now a candidate for the next step. You want to be able to have something that you can come back to that showcases, I have exceeded the, the stakes, what we measured, what we laid out, and I'm now ready to go forward. That's interesting. So I've never even thought about that. Um, as much, but it makes perfect sense now that you've mentioned it. Uh, one of my favorite authors, his name is uh, Robert Cialdini. Uh, he wrote a book called Influence, and uh, he talks about his six points of influence. And one of the points is, you know, the people's need to be consistent. Um, yes. So to be consistent with their past actions. So if they said, um, you know, people on the street who, you know, try to get you to sign up to support um, you know, kids in Africa or kids in, you know, some other, some other country, um, you know, they'll start out the conversations like, you're a nice person, aren't you? And then you say, yeah, I think I'm a nice person. And then they use that, well, if you're nice, why don't you do this for, you know, these people who really need your help? And I think, you know, that's the same type of point that you're talking about in terms of having those specific measurables that you can come back to. Because I think a lot of managers, they may come up with, you know, numerous reasons. Oh, you need to develop more. You need to do this. But they really don't think that you're right for the role or they, they may not just really want to put that on the forefront um, or I guess the, you know, the front burners in terms of, um, in, in terms of, you know, moving you and, and progressing your career. So I think that's a very interesting, interesting tip. Yeah. And I think just laying, going a step further with that, one of the things that you and I have spoken about, Lawrence, for instance, is the idea of executive presence and how do we determine what is leadership potential? So sometimes because of, it may not be negative intentions, but it might just be some unconscious biases or some stereotypes about what actually qualifies as a leader. There may be some things that your manager, they, they have a blind spot to for their perception of what a leader is, and you may not fit into that perception. So if you move away from how do I dress or, you know, what do you think of me as a person and move to can we have some performance-based metrics for my success? Can we lay these out very clearly? Then it becomes a question of data. You come back six months later, okay, I have data now that proves, according to you, this is now what makes me ready for the next step. So can we move forward based upon me doing exactly what you said? So it adds in a layer of accountability for your management team and also helps fight some of those unconscious biases that exist. Yeah, because they do exist. They do um, exist. Yeah, they, they exist for everyone, too. But it's just that you know, certain individuals have uh, more power than others. So um, depending on who your manager is, uh, you might face unconscious bias a little bit more than others. So um, no, I think that's great. So what would your third tip be for people who want to move to the next level? Okay, so my third tip would definitely be if you've been in your position for a really long time, one of the things that might happen is you might get pigeonholed. There might be a perception of you as the middle management is that's it, that's all you're capable of, that's all you want to do. So spend some time thinking about how do you shift that perception in your manager's mind to now see you as a leader? What are some things that you can do to rebrand yourself in the eyes of your team, of your manager, and really showcase I am leadership potential? whether that means taking on stretch assignments or getting further training in your company internally, externally, just showing that you have, are developing new skills, that you are staying on top of the game, and that, yes, I've been in my position for four or five years, but this isn't my limit. I'm still taking on more. I'm still capable of doing more. And then you begin to showcase the, the fruits of the work that you're doing, the training that you're doing inside the organization, outside the organization, on your team, and you can shift and kind of rebrand, recreate that perception that your team has of you. So take on some new assignments and really begin to rebrand. That's interesting. So, um, and that's something I definitely agree with is, you know, showing people what, you know, your capabilities are um, as a leader and, and, and as someone who's trying to get to that next you know, phase of their career. Um, how do you go about not making sure that, you know, the bosses don't really take advantage of that um, in, you know, a way that to make sure that you're definitely compensated for the work that you do. Okay. So when you take on extra assignments, uh, is kind of your question, how do you make sure you're staying? Well, I think it's having a conversation with your manager and making sure that they are aware first of, again, have you asked for it? Are you showing them that I'm doing these things to prove myself for the next level? I'm more than just what the, 
you know, one page of my job description says I am, I'm doing this to add more value to the company. And when I add, so you, when you add more value to the company, you should be compensated for it. So even if you're not in a traditional role that's based on, you know, delivering sales goals or meeting sales goals, to be able to say, here is how I'm now impacting the company's bottom line. I've done, I've exceeded what I'm supposed to do. Can we have a conversation about making sure that that's reflected in my compensation in some way? Right. So do you think that a person needs to do, I guess, you know, step one or I guess tip one and tip two before they get to tip three? Absolutely. Uh, the first part is asking because, as I said, that manager might be sitting in that office saying, you know, I have this extra 20000 in budget and this headcount, but no one from my team is really stepping up and they may give it away arbitrarily. So that person that asked for it gets the opportunity. And then the other part of it is if they're saying, no, you have an opportunity as the employee, as, as the person to figure out what it is that's holding me back from the next level that I want to take. And once you get that opportunity, then you can then say, okay, well, if this is holding me back, what do I need to do to fill in the gap? Maybe I need to do a rebrand. Maybe I need to rethink my approach. And I definitely need to hit those metrics that my manager has laid out as the goals to get me to the next step as well. Got you. So what would your next tip be after they've done these first three things, starting to take on more responsibility? What do they need to do next? Revisit the conversation. So again, it is all about account accountability and making sure that those, okay, we had this conversation. Don't forget about me now. I did my work. I made sure you didn't give me a pie in the sky. You need to work on developing. <laughs> that can happen in performance right. sometimes. Uh, you need to work on uh, and it's very vague. You get a vague answer, a vague idea. Dig deeper. And if you've done deeper, then when you revisit the conversation, it's now like, okay, I did those things. We identified these three steps to prove that I'm building my leadership competency. So now what's next? Am I ready for the promotion now? And revisit the conversation and ask again. And that really is a great formula to trying to get to that next step and moving out of your management position to a higher position. Right. So you make sure that your manager sticks to their commitments. So you did what you're supposed to do. Um, so now it's time for the manager to do what they are supposed to do. Exactly. Yeah. So then what happens if the manager doesn't, right? So they, they don't do what they're supposed to do. Uh, what would you recommend that uh, a person who's trying to move to that next level start to do? Well, there are lots of opportunities if that manager doesn't. So one, um, you, you definitely want to try and make it work with your team and figure out if there's any other way to make it happen. Did we have a, a disconnect? Did I miss something? Did you miss something? Were we unclear? And really trying to focus that conversation with that manager to figure out what the gap is, that you've done all the right steps and it's still not happening. You could also look internally uh, as you're developing, as you're going through that rebrand process, for instance, and letting people know that you can be perceived as a leader in the company, that you're capable, that you're doing the work that is leadership work level, uh, then you build those relationships throughout the company. And there may be other opportunities that are existing right within your company where they'll really value your talents. And it's an opportunity to move internally, for instance. But if you're doing the work, if you done everything according to the way you're supposed to do it, then you should try to uh, move within the company and find new opportunity right there within your company. Right. If that doesn't happen, then it's always time to reevaluate and figure out, is there some place that might be a better fit for me where my skills and values will be appreciated? Right, right. But you know, that doesn't necessarily have to be the first option is to you know, look at. It doesn't have to be the yeah. first option. And I, and I think that's why these tips or, you know, having this sort of process is important because if you start with saying, if you don't give me a promotion, then I'm going to go, you're really missing a lot of development opportunity for yourself. So there really does need to be that plan. I'm going to ask for it. And then after I ask for it, I'm going to get some metrics to understand how to get from where I am now to where I want to be within my team. Then I'm going to figure out what I need to do to rebrand to make sure that within my team, they see me as being capable of the next step. Then I'm going to come back and ask again, right? So you do all those things before you move to that place of, well, if I don't get what I want, then I'm going to walk away. There's lots of opportunity and it can be even a year to a year and a half long process of just figuring out how to get to the next step. But you really want to go through that process before just walking out the door. 
I love it. Um, before we get out of here, do you want to tell the audience a little bit about a, about a C -C, uh, excuse me, C suite coach? Yes, absolutely. So C suite coach is a career coaching platform where we help companies engage and retain diverse millennial talent. We have some services for working professionals as well. And we do lots of services for businesses, group coaching, individual coaching, coaching on teams. So it really is in, laid in with everything we do, figuring out solutions to help companies better engage and retain their diverse talent. Excellent. Uh, sounds like a winner to me, of course, uh, or else we wouldn't have you on Great Black Speakers. Um, I've always been so impressed by your brand. And if you're Thank interested you. in booking uh, Angelina or any of our other speakers, uh, please head over to www.greatblackspeakers.com. If you're watching this video uh, on the web, uh, there should be a direct link to Angelina's profile if you want to check out more about her and what she's up to. Um, she's definitely a stellar individual, uh, not just stellar speaker, she's definitely a, st a stellar speaker, but just all around individual in terms of what she's been able to accomplish um, in her you know, professional and personal fields. Um, I think that you know she is someone you need to definitely consider for your next event. So. On behalf of Angelina Darasaw, this is Lawrence Watkins, founder and CEO of Great Black Speakers. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah.